What's up guys? I'm Tyler. And I'm Brittany. We're back at you again with another video, Wallace Farm and Sawmill. We didn't get our Friday video posted. I came down with a little sickness, kind of like a little stomach bug there. So, messed me up guys. I didn't get to put out my normal footage. I'm sorry. <laughs> but, we're back at it again today. And this is going to be a brief one, but I want to be maybe fun for some. Because a lot of people have asked us through time, why circle mill? Why band mill? When, where, why? So let's answer those questions. So guys, as the title of this video is going to pretty much give you the clue of what's going on here, we're going to talk about band mills, circle mill, plural mills. Got two of them now. So uh, we're going to give you a comparison between band mills and circle mills. Let's give a little light talking about, um, you know, the different uses and whatnots and why one sawmill owner may have one, two, multiple of each different kind. So check this out, guys. One thing, the most immediate thing that's going to come to everybody's attention when they start talking about this type of situation is they're going to talk about kerf. For those that don't know, kerf is the width of cut or rather the width of cut, you know, sawdust that you'd be removing and leaving in between your layers of boards. So your kerf on a band mill, I believe, is somewhere in the neighborhood just shy of an eighth of an inch, okay? That's with your set and your teeth and everything. It's just under an eighth of an inch. At least on my mill, that is. And we'll go over here to the circle saw. Let me show you something about it real quick. And as we step over here to our circle saw mill, a lot of people will talk about kerf and the loss of kerf. So on this the difference here, when you take a, a width of cut here, now I run 5 sixteenths. Let me take camera to focus on that tooth there. Focus. All right, maybe it won't. That, wait. Anyway, so I run a 5 sixteenths tooth, inserted tooth on my saw. And uh, yeah, so it takes, it takes away a little over a quarter of an inch every time I make a pass here. So... Guys, every time I pull a one-inch board, so if I pull, pull a log over, take a one-inch board, I do that four times, I send one board in sawdust out through there. Now, that doesn't happen nearly as often on your band mill with your thinner kerf. So, I mean, that's one of your big pauses. But let's go to, like, one other thing that maybe you haven't thought about or maybe you did think about. So... What about the power units, guys, and fuel consumption? I'm running a 371 Detroit to run this over here. And, I, you know, I, I've never really found the true facts on this, but it's around 100 horsepower, somewhere in that 100 horsepower range. I think it may be 120. Someone fact check me below in the comments and tell me what the exact horsepower of a 371 Detroit forehead valve was supposed to be. But if we look over at our band mill hiding over there in the corner, scared of the power of the Detroit. But anyway, that band mill only runs a 25 horse Kohler. Now fuel consumption is a major difference. Let's talk about that. All right, guys. So we got the little old 25 Kohler over here and we're gonna talk about that fuel consumption. Now this guy here, I can put five gallons of fuel in this and run this mill for eight hours, dang near all day. Like no issue, you know, I mean, full running. Detroit over there, however, is somewhere in the neighborhood of about two gallons an hour is about what I can do on that. I can get about, I'll throw five gallons of fuel in there and run probably six hours maybe. So gallon and a half or so per hour. It's, a, it's, a, it's, it's not a terrible difference, but I mean, it does, look, this one runs gas, this one runs diesel and it goes through a considerable bit more diesel. I mean, I'm going to go through, I'll be honest about this one. I probably don't fuel it up, but every two and a half days. Whereas when I run this one, I just about have to put five gallons per day every day. And I, and I don't run all day every day. I run like three, four hours a day of milling. And then you got moving logs, unloading trucks, doing this, doing that. So there's many other tasks to be done here. But fuel consumption is definitely higher. Fuel consumption definitely lower. But now we got the important questions here. So back behind me here, we have my off-bearing individual, my lovely wife, who does all of the 
I'm pulling the stick over at the circle mill. I'm pushing the mill, well, power feed. Walking behind the mill over here. I do a lot of the log turning. I do, well, I do all the log turning, just about. Um, other than a few videos and making her do the whole thing here. <laughs> get out there. But what she does do every day, and I don't do, is she pulls the lumber off the mill as I'm saw milling, especially on the circle mill, because I'm on the other end pulling the stick and she's catching the lumber as it goes off. The band mill, I'm pushing the head back and forth, doing the ups and the downs and all that, turning the logs, and she is removing lumber and getting it stacked, chopped, all these other things. So let's get her perspective on which mill is better for the off-bearing individual. Definitely the circle mill to me is better for off bearing because uh, as the log comes through the board just falls off right in front of me onto a roller bed and I just shove it on down and either put it in a pile where the slabs go or put it in a pile where the lumber is. As opposed to this one, the band mill, I have to actually reach down, pull it off, carry it and get sawdust all over me and it's just way easier over there at the uh, circle mill to me. The boss has spoken. The circle mill is better. <laughs> this one I prefer. No, I, I like the band mill for certain things, and there's certain things the band mill does better than the circle mill. I am a circle mill aficionado. I literally grew up at a circle saw mill. When I was in the neighborhood of 10 years old, I got to ride on the back of my grandfather's carriage and he would give me a one or a two sign as I would come back into the hole and I'd pull that lever one or two times to set the log forward. And I had a great time doing that. So I have a deep affection for circle saw mills. Um, she also prefers to work the off bearing side of the circle saw mill. For sure. And, but the band mill to me, I'll give you, I'm gonna turn around here and I'm gonna show you what I do love about the band mill, especially this LT15 wide. Okay, so on the LT15 wide, absolutely, unequivocally, in my opinion, way better if it comes to slabbing a log. And for those of you that don't know what slabbing a log is, let's go look at one that we recently done. All right, guys, this is what you would call slabbing a log, where you take a log and you literally two inch that joker, three inch, whatever your choice is on your slab width, but you just go all the way through the log. I mean, the log is like it was, but now split and stickered. And my customer's picking that up in a day or two. But I wanted to show you that because, well, it's just kind of hard to do on a circle mill. I mean, you know, you just can't really do that nearly as easily. I mean, you can get a lot of slabs off a circle mill, but just, just not like this. Because once you get a flat face on that band mill over here, let me show you. Walk over here to the shed. I got to edge that here in just a few minutes, guys. Once you get that flat face on there and get you a couple links down, you can take your log, turn that flat face all the way to the bottom, and you can just two inch drop all the way till you get to your last board. So that's very good, very nice for that. Uh, ooh, one other thing I could include here I want to show you. Width of cut's important. So if you check this out, when I max open this guide all the way over to where it can to here, I have 36 inches. There you go. But anyway, I got yep, yeah, I got 36 inches across here, okay? The max width of cut that I can get on my circle sawmill over here, the way that I have it set up, is right at I think it's 18 and a half inches. So 18 and a half, 36. So this machine here has definitely got its purpose. You know, it's way better suited for slabbing, which we do occasionally have to do. Fan mill, super beginner friendly. Circle mill, not so much. You gotta really know what you're doing. There's a lot of things, a lot of moving parts that have to be calibrated a certain way. And well, it's more dangerous. You know, the, the band mill, look, if you get hurt at the band mill, you might've been being a big Dumbo. I don't know how to say that nicely. <laughs> I'm, I don't know, you just, I don't know. I mean, you, other than dropping lumber on your finger or something, I mean, look. I was, I was taught a long time ago, don't put your hands where they shouldn't be. So don't put your hands in anywhere things are moving and you're going to be okay. Because other than that, you drop drop a board on your toe or finger, I mean. But that can happen anywhere. You could be working con 
construction and at low you could be at lowe's picking out a few boards and dropping boards on your finger that's not a sawmill related incident in my opinion i mean that's just a uh, part of it i mean you're, you're picking up something heavy you can drop it on yourself don't do that but uh yeah this is definitely a more safe machine for sure all right so if you guys have any questions about the band mill versus the circle mill just hit us up in the comments below and we'll get back with you all right guys i kept this one simple fast small just want to do a brief comparison between the band saw mill and the circle saw mill so that's going to do it for this one guys i will be back friday lord willing i got some stuff planned to do we got a big order to cut we got to cut some 16 foot four baits i think it's four baits anyway they're long they're big and i'm gonna make a carry them by herself no all right i won't do that but that's gonna do it for us guys what do you got going on Britt? uh don't forget to come on over to our patreon page and check us out there and also don't forget uh our bonfire clothes the link will be down in the description, description below and you can go check out our merchandise there sweet all right guys that's gonna conclude this one until next time guys like comment subscribe thanks for watching see ya